Hey guys, I'm Justin Kimmel. I'm the professional fish head for the Bass University. I'm here with Cash and Rods. I'm going to tell you a trick about schooling fish. This is a soft plastic jerk bait, but there's a little rigging trick right here that's going to absolutely increase your hookup percentage when, when you're dealing with schooling fish in the summertime and the fall. One of the best tools to catch fish that just randomly bust on shad and they're just out there roaming and chasing baits is a soft plastic jerk bait, okay? So uh, today we're going to talk about a little trick that I do called the pop, pop rivet trick. Um, you know, there's so many times I've been on this bite and I use a standard offset worm hook. I've used a wide gap worm hook. Um, just, just with a weightless presentation and you throw it there and, and your hookup percentage is horrible. Um, you know, you might catch one out of five on a day and, and they might be eating it good enough to where you, you can have a good day. But, uh, more often than not, when you're dealing with an open water scenario where the fish are feeding up, they're looking up and they're chasing up, you're going to get that bite within a foot or two of the surface. And so the best thing to do that I have found involves a treble hook and a pop rivet. And all you need for this is a pair of needle nose pliers so that treble hook is what gets you that higher hookup percentage because they're coming up the treble hooks beneath beneath the um, soft plastic jerk bait here and uh, they're gonna come up beneath it and it's just gonna increase your hookup odds a big time so first first thing we're gonna do here I'm gonna grab the needle nose pliers like that all right, be careful the surfaces you, you do that. You don't want to do this on your fiberglass. You want to do this up here on your carpet, or if you're at home, do it on a block of wood or on concrete. But we're going to take that and we're going to use some force and we're going to just slam it down and free this pop rivet from the needle. Now, you don't get rid of the needle. You're going to need both. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to remove it. We're going to remove it. And we're going to take this needle now, and this is how we're going to create the cavity through this bait. So, your line's going to come through the nose at kind of an angle, just, just a little bit of an angle. And just imagine through the center of this nose, the line's going to come out here, and the pop rivet's going to be pushing right here. So, it's going to come in through the back here and fit like this. You want the plate piece of your rivet pointing back towards the tail of the of the bait. So what I always do is try to imagine where I want that where I want that to come and I start from the back of the nose here. I like the jer jerk baits that have a have a little slot. I like a um, a zoom fluke or a Berkeley juke I think it's called but you're just gonna st stick it right through there and let it come out through the center there we go so there's a little bit of an angle and what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed it through all the way and you're just gonna pull it through create that cavity and then you're gonna go through one more time and just kind of create that cavity now you're gonna take you rib it and you're going to kind of find that hole and gently ease it in there and then once you got it you just kind of push it up and the the rivet's not going to reach out past the nose it's just going to be just just tucked in there 
So you got a little bit of a spread here. That's that's really no big deal. But uh, now you want to you want a treble hook with a split ring. That split ring is going to be able to come push up against this plate, um, and uh, it just gives you a little bit of added uh, free swinging nature when you when you hook a uh, hook a bass. So now we're going to take this line. I'm using 15 pound fluorocarbon. Some guys might want to use 12 for longer casting distance. Um, maybe 10. It's just kind of up to you. I, I kind of tend to err on the heavier side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the line and just find that little hole that we created with the cavity. And it'll, it'll take. And then you just push through and it comes out the rivet just like that. Just like that. So we're going to slide it up through here. And tie your knot on the split ring. For time's sake, I'm just going to tie a quick little Palomar. I'll tie a San Diego jam or a uh, improved clinch knot a lot of the times, but uh, get that guy tied right there. And it's bad for your teeth if you bite the line. So we're gonna use scissors and cut it, make my wife happy. And you're gonna let it slide back down. Now, the last piece is hooking it. You're gonna have two hooks exposed. You're gonna take this hook, and you're kinda kinda line it up. Get where you can see this here. Line it up to where the split ring will kinda sit there and touch. And kind of imagine enough room for the split ring and, and just see how far back you're gonna go. And then you're just gonna place it in that thin piece of plastic and tuck that treble hook in there. Kind of pull on it make sure it's good it can be you can have a little wiggle room you know you can push it back push it a little forward um, so now your uh, jerkbait sitting there with two hooks down so when they come up from beneath it and strike it this way you, you pretty much got them uh, you know, my suggestion for setting the hook is just set right away. You feel them. There's no need to reel it. I have always just been able to set the hook right away. I watched Ot Defoe win a uh, Mississippi River Elite Series event on this trick using a using a swim bait, and um, and he's done it with soft plastic jerk baits, and and he set, he told me just set the hook right away, and I, that's that's what I've done. It works great. I'm using a seven foot medium heavy rod with this. Um, I get really good casting distance. Um, this is the new Icon, Worm and Jig series rod. It's a seven foot medium heavy, super light. You want to, you want to, you do want a, a lightweight rod with this. The lighter weight rod that you can, you can get away with the better because you're throwing a really light bait. You're throwing a soft plastic. There's no weight here. We're not using a weighted hook or anything. I've experimented with all kinds of ways to weight this. The, the, the thing I would suggest to you if you really want to add some weight is to, to use a swivel, like a really big ball bearing swivel, and do about a 12 inch leader. Um, everything else that I've tried has just killed my action. And I really think the action matters because you want to want that bait to land on the surface and kind of have a slow fall. And a lot of times, this bait's actually going to spiral instead of fall straight down. So it'll spiral. It's going to stay in the strike zone longer. Because like I said, the strike zone's going to be in that upper foot or two of the water column. So uh, this right here is a is just a deadly combination. You know, you want to use a high-speed reel so you can catch up and hit them um, and, and reel in fast and get back out of there again when these fish are busting to the left, busting to the right. But uh, this right here has put a lot of fish in the boat for me. Uh, it's been one of my favorite uh, baits to use as a uh, co-angler, fishing behind people with during the summer and fall, um, and it's a 
it's definitely uh, something that will put more fish in the boat for you when those fish are busting everywhere on bait fish. So guys, I hope you try this trick out. Let us know in the comments below if it worked for you. Um, I'm Justin Kimmel for Bash U and Cash and Rods. Thank <laughs> you.